again. Again. It's time for the Northwest Fishing Reports. Come along as we travel to hidden gems and fishing hotspots around the Northwest. You'll see a little of everything as we fish with top guides on their home waters and bring you the latest in tackle, tactics, and techniques to help you catch more fish. With Aaron Borg, Mike Carey, and Rob Holman. Now, it's time to go fishing. Presented by Gray's Harbor Unders. Hey everyone, welcome to Northwest Fishing Reports. We're in for a fun adventure today. We're gonna to be fishing for flounder here in South Central Sound. We just launched off of Redondo Beach. A Little bit of a surprise today. There was no dock, so we had to do it the old fashioned way. So we're getting our crew together and let's go fishing. Hey guys, how's it going? We got Albert here, Albert and Hannah. They're gonna join us to get some flounder today. Get some. Hannah, this is a really unique uh, fishery. You don't hear a lot about it. There's flounder all over Puget Sound, isn't there? There sure are. There's many different types. Um, there's starry flounder, there's rock sole, there's sand dabs. There's so many different types out there and they're really plentiful. They're sure fun to catch. Okay, so pretty much drop the boat in any place in the sound and yep. you can find flounder. Pretty much, as long as you stay within the 120 foot depth restriction to protect rockfish, um, you're good to go. There, you, can, you can find them in rocky habitats, sandy habitats, muddy habitats, they're all over. What direction are we going this morning? First I'd like to try my favorite spot, it's over at um, Vashon Island. Okay. Um, it's right off the ferry launch, you can see the ferry going between Point Defiance and Vashon all the time. A um, lot of fish there, lots of rock sole, lots of sand dabs, lots of different types of flounder there. We'll get the gear stowed and head up to Vashon Island. And if we don't catch any fish there, I've got plenty of other spots too. Um, I've got one off Gig Harbor, I've got another one off the other side of the island. We can always try Dash Point, they're everywhere. Alright, let's go fishing. We usually start our drift just around this corner of Vashon Island, right by the Blue House, and then we drift right next to the ferry launch. And then if we don't catch anything, we'll start our drift over again. But it's a rare day where we don't limit out. Hannah, how deep do you want us to uh, start here? So I think today we should start fishing at about 90 feet. That's a good range to find both sand dab and rock sole. The rock sole are gonna be a little shallower, up to about 30 feet, and the sand dab can be as deep as about 110 feet. Albert, have you ever fished for flounder before? I have fished for flounder before with Hannah and my brother Christopher. What's the biggest flounder you ever caught? The biggest flounder I caught was about 18 inches. Well, that's a big flounder. Okay. When I caught that one, I also caught another one that was, I think, nine inches or so. Wow, so your biggest catch was actually two fish. Yeah, it was a, I caught two at once and one of them I think was a sand dab, which was the smaller one, and the other one was a salt. Oh, you got one, huh? It's a fish, right? I think so. It's pretty, pretty heavy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, really. It's heavy. Pretty heavy, huh? Yeah. You have two fish in there. It's hard to lift up. Wow. What a good fish. Okay. 
Can you help me unhook it? Because I'm not really good at that. Oh, I think he swallowed it. Over, you got a fish. I think he swallowed the hook. <laughs> this is a uh, Pacific sand dab. The easiest way to tell them apart is they're left-eyed. So when you place them this way with the gill plate facing down, you see how his eyes are to the left? If he was right-eyed, if you held him this way, his gill plate would be facing right. So these are the only left-eyed flounder in the sound. And these are very good eating, these fish, Pacific sand dab. Very tasty, but this one's a little small, so we're gonna go ahead and throw them back. These fish don't get as, as big as um, rock sole do. Rock sole can get up to 24 inches in length, and sand dab only get up to about 12, 16 inches. Most of them weigh less than a third of a pound, so these are such fun fish to catch. That's bottom. Hannah moved us to a second location, a little closer to the uh, ferry terminal, and we all started hooking up right away. I've got a double. So, got one flounder and a rockfish. We're in 82 feet of water, and what we're gonna do is use a um, deep water release for the rockfish. Couple rules here in Puget Sound, rockfish are protected. The rules in Puget Sound is you cannot bottom fish deeper than 120 feet, uh, and that's to protect the rockfish. If you do catch one, um, you can't keep them. So we use a, a release de device that we'll show you here in a second and how to use it. This is a deep water fish release. Um, you, it is actually mandatory to have these on your boat if you are uh, fishing out in Puget Sound now. Very simple, there's instructions on the back here. Uh, basically, the hook goes into the mouth of the fish and you drop it down to about where you caught it uh, and then start reeling up. And when you reel up, the hook changes attitude and slides out. So we bring that fish back down to where we caught it and that allows the air bladder to decompress and um, if you were to release that fish here on the surface the air bladder would be compressed or would be inflated and it wouldn't come back up. In the mouth of this fish you can see its air bladder has come out. So we're going to just unhook him. Then we're going to take this hook Gently put it into the mouth, and now we're going to ease that fish back down to the bottom. So we're sending him back down. I'm not going to descend it full speed. I'm going to do a slow, steady descent down to the bottom. Okay, there's the bottom. So now once it's down there, that air bladder has decompressed, and if you give it a little pull, just a little jerk, he's actually going to come off the hook. That's how you do it. So I have three ounce weights here, two ounce weights, and one ounce weights to use depending on the drift. Usually I start off with a two ounce weight, and then if I find that my bait's drifting a lot, I'll switch to a three ouncer here. Um, so for other terminal tackle, you have a crappy rig here you can use. This way you don't have to tie any knots, it's super easy. You can buy a crappy rig at any store, and then uh, these snelled hooks here. I usually use size 4 hooks. Flounder have small mouths, so that's usually good to use. Um, I like to tie my own leaders here. I have um, these fluorocarbon leaders here. I use 15 pound test. You never know what's going to bite down there, so I use a little bit heavier leader. Um, I use two dropper loops. This is called a high-low rig. I use two dropper loops here. And then the bottom loop is a surgeon's loop. This is where I tie it to my swivel. And then the top loop is just another surgeon loop for the weight. So once you tie your dropper loops, um, I put my size four hooks on here and clip it on and I'm good to go. Double. <laughs> another little sand dab. Not a keeper. No. <laughs> Another uh, sculpin. Wow. Another buffalo sculpin, good size. Is this the same one? 
<laughs> Does he have a hole in his lip? Um, no, this one isn't the same one. This other one, like, had some orange coloration on him. Yeah, they're kind of pretty, aren't they? Yeah. The shape of them is weird, too. This is a pretty good spot. Oh yeah, we call this place Fish on Island. <laughs> What is it, Hana? That's a rock sole. Um, you see how his scales are really rough if you press him this way? And he's a right-eyed fish. Um, these fish are pretty good eating too. They're not quite as good as sand dab, but they're a nice white meat. They get a little bit bigger. These fish get to about 24 inches in length. Uh, they live to about 20 years old, and they reach reproductive age from four to seven years old. And you said you can fry this whole? Yes, I, I love frying these whole. Um, I take, uh, the back of my knife and I rub it against the opposite way to descale them and I gut them, fry them in a little bit of panko in the frying pan, they're delicious. I sure will try that tonight. We'll see how it tastes. Hey Sean, boy, it's the second you drop your bait, tap, tap, tap. <laughs> sort of have to time this hook set with the tap, it's kind of tricky because they are just nip, nip, nipping at the bait as opposed to really engulfing. Up, up from the depths, little guy. Sand dip. We'll put him back. Well, we want those bigger ones. He's coming, you got a double. No wonder it's so heavy. Oh, that's a different species. So this one up top is a Pacific Staghorn Sculpin. Um, it's the other of the two bullhead that we have here in the sound. The other one that we caught earlier was a Buffalo Sculpin. This one also has horns, but they're not quite as long. Another quite common catch here in the sound. And the bottom one's a rock sole. You got him there, Robbie? Got him. Good size. Feels like a double again. What a day. Oh, it's a good size one. Wow. And you were getting into some big fish. Hannah? What are these, uh... Little marks, marks on them. That's pretty common for um, rock sole. It's kind of camouflage to help them blend in with their environment. You will see those on rock sole pretty commonly. So it's okay to eat them? It's okay to eat, just as long as they don't have any worms that you can see. The, the modeling is completely normal. The guys are gonna keep eat this tonight. I'll let you know how good it is. Yeah, how are you gonna cook it? Like you the taught me how. Panko? Panko, yeah. yeah. Hannah, you saw right away something wrong with this fish. Yeah, sometimes with these flounder, you have to watch out for them. They can get worms like this in them, right there. You gotta really watch out and make sure they're clean before you keep them. Unfortunately, it's a danger we run into in the sound. Fortunately, it's fairly easy to tell. And then once you've filleted them, you can hold them up to light and you can see if there's any worms in the fillet. So usually it's really easy to tell if they're clean or not. Not harmful. Obviously not going to eat the worms. Just not appetizing. Oh yeah. Looks like a nice sized rock sole. He's pretty clean. I love look, looking at the 
other side of the fish. When these fish are really young, they have eyes on both sides of their bodies, but as they get older, their uh, other eye mi slowly migrates over to the other side. They're a good sized fish. Pretty. Pretty pan frying fish. Clean. See, Albert, that's why I kiss my fish. But you have to make sure you take the hook off their mouth before you kiss it. <laughs> Say, I'd never kiss a fish. You're crazy. <laughs> Who, me or him? We got a good fish here, I would say. Boy, they're really out in this 190 to 100 foot depth. That one? Yep. We got a double over there. Still got it? Albert? I think so. That's good fish. Yeah. That's a, a sand dab. It's a fat sand dab. We'll be back with more flounder fishing after I get this tangle untangled. Oh, you got one. Oh, a baby it's flounder. It's very, very tiny. Lingcod candy. They're what? good live bait for lingcod out at Westport. This? Little sand dabs, just like, like that. Back from the break and uh, another wow man i'm i'm finding the big ones out here it's <laughs> a beautiful sand dab that is those are good eating that's what you're looking for out here you know we should note these fish have pretty small mouths they do and so you want to go with small hooks probably mm -hmm. Size four. four. Four is about as big as you want to go. And they hit, they kind of whack whack it, don't they? Just... They do. It's it's kind of an art to setting the hook on a flounder, <laughs> knowing when uh, to do it. Yeah, although at the same time, it's not rocket science. No. <laughs> it's, a, again, it's a great fishery to take the kids out, so. It's a great beginner fishery. Yep, there he is. Hey, nice fish. That's definitely a keeper. If he doesn't have, what's it called? Uh, parasites. Oh yeah, he's clean. Another double. It's, it's not even. Come on, Albert. Another, make it a another double. Maybe a triple. <laughs> it's been like that all day. Nice fish, huh? Yeah, another little, another sand dab. These fish are just so fun to catch. One thing I should mention though is that there's a fish consumption advisory for the Department of Health. Uh, for Commencement Bay where we're fishing right now, it's uh, four meals per month for Outer Commencement Bay and two meals per month on Inner Commencement Bay. So definitely something to be aware of if you do want to try eating these fish. The fat. Oops, spat out my... Come here. Keeper rock soul. Keeper rock soul. She's gonna be in the pan fry tonight. A lot of good eating. Good eating. Hey everyone, this is the kind of fishing you get here. Oh, I got, I got a big one. <laughs> <laughs> if they're hard to keep off your line. Hard to keep off. <laughs> so if you guys are looking for something to do on a sunny day in May, Boy, you can't miss, uh, you can't go wrong catching flounder. Thank you so much for taking us out <laughs> and uh, showing us some of your secret locations. Of course, we all had a great time. We'll see you guys on the water and online. Yeah, that's totally clean. <laughs> <laughs>